splayed and quilled. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Last week we looked at how to taper a brush tip and how to make it a pressure sensitive for size. This week I am going to show you how to create your very own brush stamp. Let's get started. I have this sketch of a tree house with a gnome hiding inside in the dark. In today's tutorial I am going to show you how to paint these beautiful tree leaves using a custom stamp brush that we are about to create together. Before I start let me fill the background with a white color as we will be painting some green leaves later. This way you will be able to see them better. Click on the Fill tool and click X on your keyboard to switch from black to white. Now fill your background color. I would suggest that you always create your custom brushes on a separate canvas. When I create brushes uh, in uh, Photoshop or Krita, I like my canvas to be a square with a size of uh, 500 pixels. Leave the resolution to 300, uh, it won't hurt. In the content tab, uh, you can put a name and a description if you want, uh, but this is uh, totally optional. Leave the number of layers to 1 and leave the background color to white. Hit Create. Create a new layer and remove the background right away as we want to work on transparent layers. I said the layers because we are going to create several of them. I know it may seem so weird right now, but it will all make perfect sense in a moment, I promise you. For this particular project, and since we will be creating tree leaves, try to select a textured brush. The one I selected is called Basic Round Sharp Texture Brush and I got it from the Concept Art and Illustration Brush Pack. If you haven't installed this brush bundle yet, I added the link in the description box. Grab your lasso tool. In the Tool Options Docker, make sure that the Add action is activated as we are about to trace more than one selection. Using your lasso tool, start tracing random leaf shapes. Since the foreground color of my brush is white, I am going to click on the X letter on my keyboard to switch it back to black. Now the only thing I need to do is fill the selections with that color. Use the uh, Ctrl Shift A shortcut to undo your selections. Create a new layer and uh, repeat the process. Since the lasso is still active, start drawing more leaves and uh, maybe overlap them on the top of the ones you created earlier. Create a new layer and repeat the process again. By the way, uh, I uh, forgot to mention to you that uh, when you create brushes, uh, you create them uh, in a black color. You can always add more leaves in the middle. Let me do this uh, very quickly. 
and we are done. We have now three layers of leaves. Click F5 or click on the Edit Brush Settings icon. Make sure to have the brush tip parameter active and click on the predefined tab. Now click on the Add Stamp button. In the new window, type a new name. It's always a good idea to start with your initials first, then type any name after that. I'll type Leaves. We are going to leave these settings alone. In the style area, choose animated. And don't worry about how the image looks like in the thumbnail, okay? Now choose a random in the selection mode. So what have we done? We created three layers. And because we selected animated and random, now Krita is going to be able to make a random selections of the images we created. Turning them at different angles, maybe scattering them even. To my understanding, the changes will be subtle, but uh, still they will make uh, each of your stroke unique, uh, creating beautiful compositions. Create a new layer. Turn off the three layers underneath. Increase the size of the brush and uh, test to your stamp. Go to the Edit Brush settings again. Click on the Brush Tip option. Right now, uh, the default size of the brush is set to more than 300 pixels. Let's test it. Well, as you can see, this size is too big. I am going to try a smaller one uh, and I'm going to type 250 pixels. All right, <laughs> that's, uh, that's much better. I leave the spacing to auto. We don't need to change that. Leave the blending mode to normal. In the opacity option, turn off the enable pen settings parameter. Leave the flow option turned off. Click on the size option and activate it by ticking its box. And here we are going to turn on the enable pen settings parameter. And as you can see, it's already set to pressure. The only thing I want you to do is change the pressure curve. Now let's test uh, this very quickly and see how it looks like. That's pretty good. Uh, so let's continue. Click on the rotation option and activate it by ticking its box. Now tick the fuzzy strokes box. Tick the rotations box. And here we're going to untick the pressure box. Leave the texture option alone as we chose this textured brush for a reason. We want our leaves to be as realistic as possible and having some texture is going to help us doing that. The last thing we need to do is uh, turn off the Enable Pen Settings uh, parameter of the Opacity and the Flow options uh, in the uh, Masked Brush area. And we are ready to save. So go to Save a New Brush Preset. In the new window, we will rename the brush stamp first. Delete the word uh, copy and type uh, full leaves and add a date, for example. Now go to the very beginning and erase the number and the parentheses. Replace them with your initials. And I'm going to add a few more words. 
This time around, we don't want to create a thumbnail from the scratch pad, we want to have an icon. So click Load from Library. Look for the stamp icon since we have created a stamp brush. Click on the stamp. Maybe add a star to make this your favorite stamp brush, why not? Using the color adjustment sliders, personalize the stamp to make it your own. This way you will distinguish it from all the other stamps that already exist in your brush collection. Now paint some leaves on the thumbnail and when you are satisfied with the look, click save. To find your brush, go to the brush preset. Make sure that the tag all is selected. In the search bar, type leaves. And here it is, your own brush stamp. Click on it to make it active because we are about to paint with it. If not already done, create a new layer above your sketch. Choose a green color and start painting leaves. You may change the size of your brush as you go. If you want, uh, rename your layer. Create a new layer. This time choose a lighter green color. Change the size of your brush and uh, paint more leaves. Go to your sketch layer and click on it. Create a new layer right above it. Oh, before I forget, uh, let me rename this uh, top layer. All right, back to this uh, new layer and uh, let's rename it uh, yellow. Now grab your color and uh, start painting more leaves. Don't forget to play with uh, the opacity of your brush too, so decrease the opacity and the size maybe. All right, even though this is a cartoon, uh, try to bring some realism to it. Uh, for instance, uh, leaves are not the same shade of green, right? As you know, leaves uh, underneath are darker, the one closer to the sky are lighter, and maybe some leaves have dried up and are starting to wilt. So this is why it is so important to create several layers and uh, use different colors. If you are not satisfied with the colors you initially chose for your leaves, you can always modify them. Click Ctrl U on your keyboard to change their hue, saturation and lightness. You can also rearrange your layers. Use the up arrow to move the layer above the sketch to the very top. Finally, try some filters and uh, see what effects uh, you can create. Overlay or screen uh, maybe. Create a new layer. Choose a brown color and increase the size of your brush. Using the down arrow, move down the layer and put it right above the sketch. As you can see, I painted the tree trunk, the gnome's plant, because he's a gnome and he has a little garden. I painted his little house and finally I changed his eyes. 
Now the only thing I need to do is add the leaves uh, layers uh, we created earlier. This is the layer we set uh, the filter to screen. As you can see, uh, since the scene is at night, we can now see uh, the leaves very well against the black background. <laughs> we uh, couldn't earlier as the background was white. I am not crazy about these leaves, uh, I should remove them, but I have a feeling that I may change my mind later. So uh, rather to erase them, I am going to hide them. The easier way to hide an image is to turn off the layer where the image is located. But uh, just for the purpose of the demonstration, I would like to show you that you can also hide uh, images using filters. Here, for example, I am going to use the overlay filter. And voila, they are gone. Pretty neat, right? Create a new layer. Find the airbrush soft. Set the layers filter to overlay. Grab a yellow color and select the lightest yellow located at the very tip of a triangle. Uh, it's the one that is almost white. Increase the size of your brush and uh, paint uh, rays of light on the leaves and on the tree trunk. Now remember, this is a fantasy scene. Uh, maybe the house we see here is one of many houses uh, in a gnome uh, community. Uh, maybe the ray of lights are coming from the moon, or maybe they are coming from other lit houses uh, on branches uh, above and below this house. It's your story to tell, so uh, go wild. I will stop here. I think it looks uh, pretty good. What do you think? I changed the eyes again. <laughs> this uh, happens a lot sometimes. I just can't make up my mind. Next week is the final video for this uh, series on introduction to Crillard brushes. If you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comments uh, area before first day, July 1st, uh, 2021, as uh, this video will be about uh, answering your questions. Now, I will not lie to you and pretend to know everything. <laughs> that would be a big lie, but rest assured that I will do my best to help you. So I will see you next week. Happy painting and have a great and successful week. Bye.